Hello everyone. And welcome to Dad and Me Love, love history. history. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. We could be the greatest team that the world has ever seen. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. Listeners, this month, the Olympic Games finally begin after the longest gap since World War II. That's right, the ancient Greeks invented the Olympic Games almost 2,800 years ago, and over 1,000 years later than that, the Olympic Games were closed down. Another 1,500 years went by, and then in 1896 AD, 125 years ago from now, the modern Summer Olympic Games rebooted the franchise and they've been going ever since. So today we are investigating why the Olympics started, why they stopped, why they started again after 1,500 years after they stopped. Yeah, and the Olympics have been taking place every four years since 1896, except when they had to postpone the Games due to a couple of world wars. And because of COVID-19. That's right, of course the 2020 Olympics are taking place in Japan this month, July 2021, postponed from last year because of coronavirus. Hey James, why would it be hotter in an Olympic stadium which has no spectators? I don't know. Because it's hotter without fans. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> To help us answer why the ancient Greeks created the Olympic Games in the first place, and to tell us why those ancient Olympic Games came to an end, we are delighted to welcome back on our pod Mark Selleck from the hit podcast series Casting Through Ancient Greece. Hi Mark and welcome back to Dad and Me. Hi Mark. Hi Paul, hi James, thanks for having me on. Oh, I'm so glad you could be here. So what's been happening with your Casting Through Ancient Greece podcast since we last had you on? We had you on towards the end of last year on our episode number 38 about uh, what made Spartan Warriors the greatest. Um, What's been happening with your podcast series since then? Um, So I think since then I've been covering uh, most of the Greek and Persian wars. I think I've spent about 18 episodes just going over all the various events that have taken place. I even covered um, both the uh, 300 movies, uh, comparing with uh, what's in Hollywood and what actually happened in history. So that was a bit of fun. Cool. And um, I'm just now currently coming up to the end of that uh, that time period. Cool. Well, that's, that sounds brilliant. And uh, yeah, I'd, we'd really recommend casting through ancient Greece uh, for a real good in-depth uh, look at what was happening in, in ancient Greece. Hey James, what? why did the cat get disqualified from the Animal Olympics? Because he was a cheater. Yeah! <laughs> so when and why did the ancient Greeks invent the Olympic Games? Okay, so the Olympic Games are traditionally uh, thought to have been invented or first taken place in 776 BC. So that's almost 2,800 years ago. And they would be held for uh, every four years. And this would continue on for almost a thousand years with this uh, taking place. And they were called the Olympic Games as they were held in a city-state known as Olympia. So other Greek cities had their own games. It's just that Olympias became the biggest and best. Yeah, so there would be many celebrated around. The various different festivals are usually associated with a Greek god as well. So they wouldn't just be about games, but they would have a religious aspect to them as well. And so many of the games were seen as celebrating a common Greek culture and unity. And what would happen is when the Olympics were going to take place, there were a truce would be in act all over Greece. So if any wars were taking place or any other cities were fighting their neighbours, a truce would be enacted to allow all the competitors to travel to Olympia and compete freely without being hindered. So they had, you said earlier, a, a thousand years of the games taking place at Olympia every four years. They, these different city-states 
that often would fight against each other at, at different times through this period at least would obviously call a truce and have a peace and the, the, so the games were really a, a kind of a symbol of that peace and and friendly competition rather than rather than war it all sounds like such a a great idea and a great event and also of course great entertainment for spectators to watch so why did they stop it Okay, yeah, so good question. The Olympic Games revolved around basically being Greek and celebrating Greek culture. And so what would begin the the, the decline of of this concept was uh, the Romans. So in um, 31 BC, so that's about 745 years after the Olympics were formed, uh, the Romans would conquer and fully control all of Greek lands. It's from this point that a decline in the popularity of the Games would be seen. And again, I think a big part of this was because uh, Greece had lost a lot of its identity through its culture now that it was part of the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire takes over Greece like it does much of, of, of Europe and North Africa and parts of West Asia and some Roman emperors liked the Olympic Games but some didn't. What would happen is under Emperor Theodosius uh, Christianity would become the official religion of uh, the Roman Empire and he would end up outlawing any pagan festival. The Olympics were a religious festival as much as they were a athletic event. In honor, so, in honor of the Greek god Zeus, is that right? Yeah, so Zeus was uh, the god who was honored at Olympia and obviously uh, the god Zeus was considered a pagan god by uh, the Christian church. Um, so the games would go into decline because of um, uh, basically being outlawed in the region. There is some evidence that the games did continue, but probably in a more limited sense with uh, people just from the region around Olympia. But basically the Olympic Games would cease to be a, um, an official festival from that point on until um, a revival in our modern times. Yeah, and we are going to uh, get stuck into James and I exactly kind of when and why that revival in modern times began. But um, oh, thank you so much, Mark, for being our ancient Greek expert. And you can catch Mark's a grown-up podcast series casting through ancient Greece across social media and wherever you listen to your to your podcast, you're going to find his, his there. So thanks again, Mark. Thanks. All right, thanks, Paul. Thanks, James, for having me back on. Thank you. Hey James, why is basketball the messiest indoor sport at the Olympics? I don't know. Because the players dribble all over the place. Oh. <laughs> we love, we love history, we love history, baby! We love, we love history! In his final days, Alexander the Great's generals asked him who should succeed him. Alexander's answer, the strongest. Taken literally, this would see the close of the classical Greek age, an age thousands of years in the making. Join me, Mark Selleck, as I go back to retell the story of ancient Greece in my series Casting Through Ancient Greece. We will cast our way back to its beginnings, all the way through to the spread of its culture throughout the known world, thanks to Alexander and his generals. You can listen and subscribe to the series at www.castingthroughancientgreece.com or you can listen on your favourite podcasting platform. Don't forget to follow the series over on Twitter at Casting Greece or on Facebook at Casting Through Ancient Greece. I look forward to seeing you there. So the ancient Olympic Games came to an end after the Roman Empire took over Greece and the Romans decided they didn't like the religious part of the Greeks' Olympic Games. So they closed down the whole show. Over 1,500 years later, the Olympics would make a comeback without any Greek gods involved. In the 1850s, sports competitions inspired by the ancient Olympic Games began happening in two countries. One was Greece, which was only open to Greek competitors, and the other was in England, in a tiny town called Much Wenlock. In 1850, the Wenlock Olympian Games were launched mainly just to encourage the local people in sport and exercise. It was not an international competition. But the organisers kept in touch with the organisers of the sports competitions that were happening in Greece. And then a rich French man, 
who would go on to create the modern Olympic Games, visited the Much Wenlocks Olympian Games one year to get ideas about how to make an even bigger event. His name was Baron Pierre de Corbetin. Pierre Corbetin set up the International Olympic Committee, or IOC. The IOC is still organising the Olympic Games today. Pierre Corbetin and his committee wanted to encourage countries to come together to compete in friendly ways through sport. The IOC's first Olympics were in Athens, Greece in 1896. 241 athletes from 14 different nations took part, doing 9 different sports. The next games were in Coubertin's home city of Paris, France in 1900. And that was the first time women were allowed to compete. In 1900, 997 athletes from 24 nations took part, doing 20 different sports. In today's Olympics, over 10,000 athletes from over 200 nations take part in at least 26 sports. James, are there any sports from the ancient Greek Olympics that we can see in the modern Olympic Games today? Surfing, perhaps? Well, they had discus, long jump, javelin, boxing. And they had their own pentathlon version. The pentathlon had discus, long jump, javelin running. All things that we have. But then for the fifth one, they had wrestling. And they also had chariot racing, so a bit like horse racing. And like just running racing. Yeah, I think they had lots of different types of running races, didn't they? Including the marathon, of course which we spoke about in episode 38 when we looked at the Sparta warriors of ancient Greece. Oh, and listener, you might be wondering, how do we know what happened in these ancient Greek games over 2,000 years ago? Well, there are still surviving artefacts, like vases, for example, with paintings on them of men throwing a discus or hurling a javelin. So we can actually see with our own eyes, think objects that come from ancient Greece showing what they did. And of course, there's other sources as well that uh, historians and archeologists have, have literally dug up from the past. Why can Cinderella never win any ball sport at the Olympics? Because she runs away from the ball. <laughs> So surfing wasn't in the ancient Olympics. What else did you find out, James? So, in 1904, the Olympics gold, silver and bronze medals were given out for the first time. And still today, on those medals is the Greek goddess of victory, called Nike. Nike knew what they were doing by calling their company Nike. <laughs> the Winter Olympics began in 1924 in the French Alps, and the Paralympics began in 1948 in the UK. The Paralympics, now that's got an interesting history. Sounds like an idea for another episode. But hey, that's about it for this episode. We do have questions and then outtakes at the end. So tell everyone you know, adults and kids. Yeah, tell them about this episode and our whole series. And now we're on Patreon as well. Check out patreon.com for Dad and Me Love History. There you can get some extras for just a couple of dollars a month. You'll be supporting the show. Have a look at the, at the extras you'll get there. And please share our podcast on social media and rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. And tell us what you think on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Bye from now. From Dad and me. Love history. history. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. We could be the greatest team that the world has ever seen. Dad and me love a whole lot of history. Here are some questions to see how well you understood today's episode. Number one, when did the ancient Greek Olympics begin? Number two, which empire invaded Greece and ended the Olympic Games? Number three, true or false? Different Greek cities competed at the ancient Olympic Games. 
Number four, true or false? Ancient Greek cities used to fight each other. Number five, explain how the ancient Olympic Games helped to bring peace. And finally, number six, explain how the modern Olympic Games began in the late 19th century. Hey James, I see you won a silver medal at the Fun Olympics. What's it for? It's for telling dad jokes. Hey, and what's that gold medal for? For stopping telling dad jokes. <laughs> Sorry, I've stolen your your question there. <laughs> oh yeah, so you were saying all that stuff. So I'll obviously cut this back in earlier. Ah, so surfing wasn't in the ancient Olympics. Hey James, what? what? Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, forgot. <laughs> So in the pentathlon, if I can find it, here we go. The pentathlon had discus, long jump, javelin running. Why can Cinderella never win any ball sport at the Olympics? Because she lost the shoe. Because she runs away from the ball. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.